Hello and welcome back to the third rail. If you follow the channel, you will be familiar with the new additions to the collection videos I publish regularly. The vast majority of these videos is about locomotives, because that's a topic I found people are more interested in. But locomotives represent only a small proportion of the items I add to the collection. The way I approach the collection is not only to try and accumulate models based on a shopping list to complete my theme, but also for it to be a living collection. So to bring my locomotives to life, I also need rolling stock, and I have been concentrating on that aspect for the last couple of years. Slowly but surely, model by model, Week by week, the collection of coaches and wagons has steadily grown. It now includes just over 90% of the models listed in the Märklin standard and export catalogues of the 1980s. I am now in a position where I have matching stock for the majority of my locomotives. So this week we are going to have a look at some of the latest arrivals in that part of the collection. I just received some Belgian SNCB rolling stock, and I thought we should have a first look at them together. First we have a few Thunder boxes. They are ex-Deutsche Reichsbahn stock in SNCB livery. They were issued as a special edition for Belgium only in 1985, then made available to order worldwide in 1986. The models we have here have numbers 4113, 4114 and 4115. I am not sure they are prototypical because Belgium didn't receive many Deutsche Reichsbahn coaches as war well reparations after World War II. I think the luggage van might be, but the coaches might be just fantasy. If you know about this, it would be great if you left a comment with some information sources below. I'd be very interested. Then we have something I have been trying to get for a very long time. It is an open wagon of type 1000-G1 of the SNCB again. The first version of this model was produced for a few years between 1967 and 1972. It was then reissued with a new running number as a special series for Belgium then export in the years 85 and 86 and it was followed by a third and final version with a different running number again between 1987 and 1988. This is one of the Märklin models with an automatic unload mechanism. There is a little lever under the chassis that can be remotely actuated using an uncoupling track. Let me show you on a piece of track. First from the side, you can see the uncoupling ramp pushing against the lever. And if we look from another angle, we can see that both side panels are pushed outwards when that happens. Nice, isn't it? Now, I was lucky to find a few of them from a single seller based in the UK. So I bought everything he had. That's seven units, which are version two and three. And the seller also had four units of the first version, which I also took of his hands. And for a change, I didn't pay more than it was worth. The lot was half price compared to what you would have to pay normally. I can't wait to get everything on the track now, but I need to check them first. So let's move to the layout. I'll start with the 1000 G1s. I had a quick look at them when I received them, and I already know that most of them will need a bit of TLC. Let's have a look at one example of them. Uh, on this one, the wheels are heavily oxidized and will need cleaning, and I think the couplings all need adjusting. So let's start with the wheels. Considering their state, a cotton bud with alcohol will not be enough here. 
I'll take the uh, wheel set off instead and I'm going to grab my track rubber. Then all I need to do is to rub the wheels gently to remove the oxidation. My track rubber is not the best one as you can see, it produces a lot of debris, but it does the job. Nearly as good as new now, I just need to do the same with the other wheel set. And same thing again, and we are all done. Now, the next thing I have to do at that stage is to check the leaf springs around the couplings. On this car they are out of shape, so they won't provide the tension required for the coupling to return to center. I'll try and gently straighten them as good as I can with a pair of uh, small needle nose pliers. OK. Right, I'm gonna leave that car to the side for now and I just need to repeat the process as needed on all the other wagons. And fortunately none of them were that bad. So 10 minutes later I was ready for the next step. I need to treat all the wheels now. So I'll use a bit of paraffin-based track cleaner on all wheels to remove the track rubber residues left behind. And for this I'll use a simple cotton bird dipped in the solution. The track cleaner will also leave a protective coating that will repel dirt and make the wheels easier to clean when I take them off the track later on. While we're here, if we look at the chassis, I am missing a few springs. Some wagons have two fitted, some have only one, whilst others have none. So I will research this bit, but I can get replacement springs of this type very easily. And I'll order what I need when I next replenish my stock of spare parts. I'll be fine without for now, as they will run empty. I can also see now that some of the side panels on the older cars are showing a bit of warping. Uh, I won't touch this for now either, but this can be fixed with a bit of heat. I might do a video if and when I do this. So that would have taken care of the wheels and the sides of the coupling, so that leaves us now with the most annoying part, which are the couplings themselves. They all look like they need some form of attention. If you have seen my little helper video about couplings, little link at the top as usual, you know it is time to get our friend the coupling gauge out. Let's check the first coach. So I've put the coupling gauge on the track, I'll push the wagon against it, and indeed uh, we have a first coupling which is really out of shape. Now let's check the other side. This one is better, but it's not right. Okay, let's check another car. The first side is okay, and the other side too. So I'm going to use this car as a reference to adjust all the others. Now if we look at the coupling arrangement, uh, these wagons have a different one compared to other Merklin wagons of the time. The coupling is riveted onto a metal support that itself slides into the chassis. It is this support that seems to be out of shape on most wagons here. So I'll start by bending it back in place by pushing it on its sides with a screwdriver tip. So the aim is that the support becomes parallel to the chassis. There we go. So I check the gauge again. It's better, but we're not quite there yet. I'll try and push the coupling assembly a bit more. And there we are. Now I'll do the same for the other side. And we're okay on that side now by the looks of it. 
I need to check the coupling will attach to my reference car. The process should not require any force and the coupling should engage automatically with a gentle push. And this is working smoothly now. Excellent. OK, I just need to do the same for the remaining wagons. And we are now in another 20 minutes later and I have a nice rake of self-unloaders ready for the track. And to pull all this, I think the ideal candidate is a Belgian AFB round nose, which looks like a nohab. It's a 3066, and thinking about it, it must be two years since I last used it. It featured in one of my first ever running sessions I uploaded. So I'm going to rear the model. We'll attach it to the consist. It's very smooth. And then we'll move it out of the way. All pretty much effortless. Beautiful. Now let's uh, have a look at the coaches. Here things will be much easier. Uh, I just need to clean and treat the wheels again and the couplings don't look out of shape, so I'll take a chance. The coaches attach to each other nicely. Yeah, that's a good sign. Okay, all looks okay. Minimal first with these. I'm going to use a Series 64 for this. That's a former Prussian P8. And that's Merklin model number 3086. I just need to do a bit of lubrication here. I left that step out the last time I put it away to avoid it seizing over time. OK, all done. And we are ready for a bit of action. Now, let's see if all this path was worth it. So I quickly checked the trains were managing to go over the turnouts uh, without any issue and that was fine. So we are now going to the fun bit which is to watch the trains as they travel across different parts of the layout for a bit. I hope you enjoy watching them as much as I did that day.